How you doing guys? Yeah, I ride mountain bikes a lot. Um, and I do a lot of my thinking. I go riding most mornings and this is kind of my time to reflect on my coaching from the night before or think about business development and stuff like that. I find that by occupying my body then I can kind of think better and stuff like that. Anyway, so as some of you will know, like 2014, I smashed my lower back up and, and it turned to shit and couldn't walk for a long time and, and struggled a lot. Um, and I was kind of searching for what I was going to do next because I didn't think I'd be able to go back to teaching jiu-jitsu again. Uh, and my lovely um, partner bought me a dog. Well, she didn't buy me a dog. I got a free dog, right? So, And there's a reason it was free, right? Because it was insane. It was, it was supposed to get put down due to um, aggression. And later on, I learned that that was just insecurity. So anyway, learning to train this dog and delving into uh, training dogs gave me quite an eye-opening look into human beings, actually. Um, and so something that I've noticed lately, now that I'm training a lot more kids and especially a lot more kids like who are on the spectrum and got various things whatever um is that there tends to be there's a tendency to to blame the kid and to go well there's something wrong with a kid so let's drug them up because like we don't know what else to do and i'm seeing a parallel between that and dog training whereby um maybe uneducated or lazy owners who don't exercise their dogs, which is like 70% of people, believe it or not. So don't be surprised by all the barking dogs in your neighborhood. Anyway, so dogs that are not tended to, who don't get their needs met, play out. And humans are the same. So a dog that doesn't get exercise, that has too much stored energy, well, it's going to use that energy some way. And usually the owners aren't home and then you come home and and your, your lounge is destroyed and the pillows are torn up and there's holes dug in the backyard. Well, what what do most people do? Well, well, actually, a lot go, well, I need to exercise my dog more, which is the correct answer, you know, and, and entertain it more. Or maybe the dog is not the right energy level for, for my household, you know, like elderly people going and buying a, a sheepdog, a border collie or something that's high energy, then this, that's just a disaster for the most part. There are exceptions. Um, but with kids, these days, a high energy kid, and I meet a lot of kids, and I meet a lot of high energy kids, and I can tell by how they learn jiu-jitsu, like, what's going on, to a large degree. You know, obviously I'm no expert, but I have some ideas and it's really funny because so many of the kids who are deemed to be have short attention spans and things like this and who can't focus are actually just bored yeah like they're really really smart kids they learn really fast um, they think really fast like they're really intelligent and they're just bored at school you know like that's what I'm thinking, and, and, and now that kids sit down even more, that's even worse, because now they've got all the stored energy, they've got nowhere to use it, they're at school, they, they're like, I, I wanna be running around and using up some of this energy, um, and they don't get to, or very rarely, or not enough. And then they get home, and instead of going out to play a dozen sports, you know, like they just get an iPad thrown in front of them, and then, it just becomes this vicious cycle. Um, it's 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 really sad to see because I'm only seeing a tiny amount of kids, and it's amazing being able to change their lives and see the differences in them. You know, like yeah, when they start, they can be a little bit naughty in class and stuff like this. But I ask them to self-regulate. You know, I don't like tell them that they're wrong. I ask them a question. I'm like, you know, like. I'll put, I might, I'll put them in the naughty chair and they can sit there and I'll see how they do in the naughty chair. You know, some kids know they've done the wrong thing. They have self-regulation. They just chose not to use it. 
So I'm like, are you ready to come back to training yet? And they're like, yes. Do you know why I put you here? Yes. Are you going to continue to do it? No. Okay, good answers. Let's get going, right? And whereas, you know, a couple of months later, or even a month later, sometimes less, is that those kids learn to self-regulate. I, I make them responsible for their behaviour. Oh, I've got some spider climbing on me. Um, and I, I ask them to look after themselves, you know? Like, yes, we do get the occasional kid who, is, who, who, who can't fit into the class, you know, who really does have special needs and, and like, is too disruptive. Um, my gut feeling is that in the future, I'd love to be able to hire an early childhood edu uh, education specialist who specializes in that, in that area and for me to teach them jiu-jitsu basics and then they can run, you know, specialized spectrum classes for the kids who can't fit into a normal class because I just want every kid to do jiu-jitsu. I think it's an incredible thing for them and I see amazing changes in them. Anyway, so that's something to think about if um, if you happen to be one of those hyperactive kids, if you're a parent watching this and, and you're like, I don't know what to do with my kid, the, the school isn't happy with the way he's behaving, you know, the school said he needs to be on medication, the doctor said he needs to be on medication, all these things. First of all, go, well, am I meeting my kid's needs? You know, like, not do they fit into the, the, the norm? Because there is no norm, you know, and that's coming from one of those kids. That's me. I was that kid, you know. I'd be up early training at five o'clock in the morning before school. I'd be doing phys ed, I'd be doing exercise all day at school. I didn't want to sit in the classroom. I still can't stand sitting in the classroom or sitting down for very long. That's just me. That's how I work. So the answer is not to drug the person up because I've had that too, you know. And, and that's not a fun place to be, hence why I can talk with some authority about what it's like on the other side for these kids who are being drugged and stuff like that. Because, you know, I had that in my adult life. I went through a particular period of enormous stress and I really just needed some business management advice and some help like that. But instead, I just spoke to a psychologist who then spoke to somebody else and then, you know, I was freaking out. So like, well, you know, you should take this drug and you should try this. And then the next thing, five years has gone past and I'm a complete mess. So I know what it's like. And I think that that should be a last resort. Anyway, that's enough of my gobbing on mid ride. But as I said, this is when I do a lot of my thinking. So let's look after those kids. Let's do the right thing by them. Let's not treat them like a, like a dog and put a barking collar on them because we can't do our job. You know, let's exercise these kids. Let's, let's give them sufficient stimulation. You know, well, let's look after them. That's the main thing because they've got their whole lives ahead of them. And if we do the right thing now, then we can, we can make amazing human beings. And that's really what I want.